unless people care a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. Dr. Seuss said this in his timeless book, The Lorax. The Lab School of Washington's Tide Turners Environmental Group works to study science and public policy to turn the tide on environmental destruction. In the summer of 2013, Tide Turners traveled to Grandma Mand Island, New Brunswick, Canada to learn more about whales. Whales are the largest animals known to man. Their powerful and graceful ways have amazed the human race for thousands of generations. But why do we care? What is the point of saving these animals whose species hangs in the balance? They cause no harm to mankind, so why is mankind causing harm to them? If we do not act now, not only will the North Atlantic right whales disappear, but other animals that symbiotically depend on them will disappear as well. In North America, from the 1600s to the 1800s, humans hunted whales for meat, oil, whalebone, and ambergris, which is a type of wax. Baleen, which some whales have instead of teeth, was used mostly for fashion. It is flexible and it was used in items like umbrellas and corsets. Baleen was used in ways that plastic is today. Blubber was used to lubricate machinery and as components of soap, cosmetics, and oil for lamps. Much like today's dependence on drilling for oil, whale oil helped fuel the Industrial Revolution and the economy of the early colonies. The white whales were given the name because they were the white whales to hunt. They were slow and did not move out of the way when whaling ships were approaching. Because 40% of their bodies are blubber, right whales float when they are killed, so they were easily harvested. 44% of right whales are killed by vessel strikes, Others are killed by entanglement in fish gear and the and destruction of habitat and being exposed to potential toxins in the water. Today is one of the largest crude oil ports in North America. Traffic is heavy in the area. Hundreds of vessels pass through the port each year. The bay is also home to the northern right whale. From Florida to Canada, right whales are exposed to numerous threats from human activities and their habitats. In 1935, an international treaty was forged and banned the commercial hunting of the North Atlantic right whale. In 1982, the International Whaling Commission passed a ban on commercial whaling altogether. While these measures helped tremendously, ship strikes were still decimating the population. So in 2003, New Brunswick-based Irving Oil, in conjunction with biologists and the Canadian government, successfully rerouted the shipping routes in the Bay of Fundy to move ships away from the feeding grounds of the North Atlantic right whale. This move marks the first time shipping lanes have been altered to protect an endangered species. And the right whale numbers have rebounded from 300 a decade ago to about 500 today. This one change in just one body of water with just one shipping route out of thousands throughout the world has made all the difference. The North Atlantic right whale now has a chance at recovery because industry and wildlife organizations came together and worked on the shipping lane change for four years with Transportation Canada and government agencies that regulate shipping. Right whales gave us light when there was nothing but darkness. Their oil warmed the homes of the world, lit the factories of America, and fueled the Industrial Revolution. They are our responsibility for America's claim to wealth and fame. They helped build our country, and now we owe it to them to preserve them, our environment, and ourselves. Groundbreaking cooperation between industry, activities, and government seems to be working to turn the tide for these animals and return the favor.